We're in Greece, not far from Thessaloniki, and we're working on the TAP project. Along the TAP project route, the biggest crossings such as rivers and motorways are carried out using horizontal directional drilling. This is the Axios crossing, measuring exactly 1,812 meters with a 48-inch pipeline. So we drilled horizontally to open a 62-inch diameter hole. We carried out a geophysical survey and electrical image of the terrain and it helped us to adjust the design a little. Instead of going down to 35 or 40 meters in depth, we stayed at 25 meters in depth from the entry or exit point. And this helped us to stay in more favorable layers of grounds and drill more easily. The concern that we had was having sludge rising up to the surface, especially under the river we were supposed to cross. Once we could sign off on the design, we selected the tools that would help minimize the amount of sludge rising up. We asked HDI to modify the tool we used to bore the pilot hole four months before the start of the project. I won't necessarily go into detail about how we modified it, but we chose the most appropriate size of tool and modified the boring tool. This helped us to push back the point at which we had sludge rising to the surface as far as possible. The challenge with the Axios River was the space we needed on the pipeline side. To be able to install 1800 meters of pipeline, given that we always want to have the channel lined up straight with the borehole. As well as having a curved pipeline, the pipeline crossed several aerial electrical lines, including some that we couldn't cut off. An irrigation channel that was opened while we were creating the crossing and a road which had been blocked. When we're pulling a pipeline, especially a pipeline as long or as heavy as this one, as it weighs 1,800 to 1,900 tons, the challenge is being able to get it moving easily. As the ground where the pipeline is installed is entirely flat, and impermeable, we were able to dig a trench like a big gutter and place the pipe in it before filling the trench with water and floating the pipe like a boat. Rather than using the 90 to 100 tons of force that was originally estimated, we were able to get the pipeline moving with between 15 to 20 tons. Two things that worked really well on this particularly drill project were the tools which were especially designed by HDI and the ballasting system. A ballasting system is actually a sort of buoy that runs the length of the pipeline. We insert it into the pipeline and fill the annular space between this buoy and the pipe wall with water to add weight so that the pipeline is inert in the hole. We always prefer to keep a pipeline floating, and this is why the rear of the pipe is permanently raised up by side booms to avoid water getting inside the pipe. Once the pipe has been pulled through, we deballast the pipe to remove it safely and easily. We fill the pipe by filling the buoy with water, and then we remove the buoy to break it up and send it to the next job. This project took us 54 days, but it was supposed to take 23 to 25 days longer, according to the initial schedule. It's unusual to be ahead of schedule with directional drilling. But our area of expertise is the complex drilling. By carrying out the project in this way, we were able to install a pipeline with 40 tons of traction force when we had expected to use much more. So yes, 
What we did here worked well and we'll remember that.